question is that motion number 14107, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Motion is therefore agreed to. We now move to topical questions. Question 1, Alison Johnson. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it would invest the £500 million that the UK Government has announced to build nuclear armed submarine infrastructure to benefit the Scottish economy and create jobs. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding officer, the United Kingdom Government is implementing swinging cuts to both public services and the benefits received by the most vulnerable in society. The Chancellor's announcement, therefore, and his commitment to invest a further £100 billion on a new generation of nuclear weapons clearly demonstrates that the UK Government has its priorities all wrong. The Scottish Government has set out the infrastructure priorities we pursue through the Infrastructure Investment Plan, covering areas such as housing, transport, energy efficiency, schools and hospitals. These are the priorities of the people of Scotland. Alison Johns. Um, thank you. It is indeed preemptive and wrong-headed to spend half a billion pounds on paving the way for new nuclear weapons while people suffer hardship through welfare cuts and are having to rely on food banks. But Faslane is strategically important. It's a vital naval base which can play a much more effective role in our defence without nuclear weapons. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that if the point of this money is to create jobs and improve people's lives, the UK Government's return on this particular investment will be very poor indeed? Cabinet I agree with um, the, the approach and the, the line of argument advanced by Alison Johnson. Um, I think the, uh, there is a, a long-term role for Faslane as a conventional naval base. Um, it, it has always formed part of the plans of, of this uh, government and of my party. Um, but at a time when public expenditure is under such pressure, and when support for defence expenditure, and the defence expenditure, which I think is universally, if not universally, very broadly supported within this country, of ensuring that our conventional defences are effective and properly funded, the decision to invest £500 million on, essentially, as the Chancellor said yesterday, the foundations of the next generation of nuclear weapons is, in this government's view, the wrong decision to be made. And there are a variety of other ways in which we could ensure that the expenditure of £500 million on a capital investment programme could have a much greater and more profound and more long-lasting and beneficial effect on the lives of people of Scotland if it was spent in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Ms Johnson. Um, on the 6th of August last year, the Scottish Parliament voted with the Greens for a constitutional ban on Trident and a global ban on nuclear weapons. But George Osborne is still going ahead and Labour continues to say they're anti-nuclear but pro-new weapons. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that this investment does not respect the will of the Scottish people and will only undermine global disarmament efforts? And does he welcome the opportunity for Scottish Labour to finally get firmly behind unilateral disarmament? Cabinet Secretary. I, I think it is beyond doubt that the decision that the Chancellor announced yesterday completely ignores the question of respect to the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government. And one of the points that was made by the Prime Minister to the First Minister immediately after the general election was the fact that he intended to govern on the basis of respect. And unfortunately, that was, there was no respect in Monday's announcement, no respect whatsoever, no respect for this Parliament, and frankly, no respect for the Westminster Parliament either, where the Westminster Parliament apparently is going to be having a debate and a decision about whether to proceed with nuclear, the next generation of nuclear weapons. So I think the, the principle of respect has been entirely ignored by the Conservative government. And as for the points that Alison Johnson makes about uh, the Labour Party, well, I, I shall leave the Labour Party to speak for themselves. But I do think uh, the overwhelming majority of um, Labour supporting individuals in Scotland are hostile to the new generation of Trident nuclear missiles that are proposed by the United Kingdom Government, and it would be good if their voices were expressed by the Labour Party in Scotland. Sandra White. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, can I ask the Deputy First Minister if he agrees not just with me, but with very many eminent experts, that uh, Trident nuclear weapons are obsolete and really play no part in the terrorism which is happening just now, and to spend this type of money when we're supposed to be, according to Mr Osborne, uh, in the austerity is absolutely disgraceful and terrible for the people who are suffering just now with the cuts that are coming from Westminster. I, I agree with uh, 
Sandra White on her point about the, 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 the wrong priorities of the United Kingdom government, given the pressure on the public finances and the fact that conventional defence forces are not receiving the support that they actually require to enable them to do the job safely that we expect of them. The other point is, I think, that is, is the strategic point that's made by Sandra White, which is we live in a very troubled world. Uh, there are a whole variety of different um, examples of uh, conflict around the world, and nuclear weapons are not protecting us or not contributing towards the stabilisation of those conditions. And that is uh, one of the many reasons why uh, this government believes that uh, there is no place for nuclear weapons in our society. Jackie Bailey. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware that the £500 million investment from the UK Government into Faslane is also for jetties and ship lifts to accommodate additional submarines? That's a decision which flows from um, something that Gordon Brown did to consolidate all the UK submarine fleet at Faslane. Surely with the SNP's plans to make Faslane home to the Scottish Navy, whatever size that would be, um, this would be a welcome investment in infrastructure. And therefore, does he agree with his own words when he said he would use the money to invest in conventional defence, or Nicola Sturgeon's when she said it would be education? So, Deputy First Minister, who should we believe? Deputy First Minister. Well, I might have known that Gordon Brown would be responsible for all of this. Uh, he seems to be responsible for everything disastrous that's happened around about us in uh, over many years. I can also say to Jackie Bailey, it, it really is, I think it says it all, that Jackie Bailey is coming here as the cheerleader for this announcement that was made by the Conservative government on Monday. It's just continuing, of course, the role that Jackie Bailey has occupied for some years as the cheerleader for the Conservatives within this Parliament. And it's nice that after, it's nice that, it's nice that after the summer break, some things are back to normal within 11 minutes of Parliament reconvening that we've had that confirmed. Jackie Bailey knows the priorities of this government. The priorities of this government are to invest in our housing infrastructure to create homes for our people, in the transport infrastructure uh, to connect our communities, to the energy efficiency needs of our population to reduce energy costs, to invest in our schools and our hospitals and to ensure that we meet the needs and the expectations of the people of Scotland at every turn. Jimmy McGregor. Uh, thank you. Um, given the population of Argyll and Butte is projected to decline sharply over the next few years, a subject we debated recently in this Parliament, does the Minister accept that many people in Argyll and Butte are delighted with the Chancellor's announcement yesterday, yeah. which will help create and secure many thousands of valuable yeah, jobs, dear. as well as the very many construction jobs that will be created? Uh, the new infrastructure will allow the number of staff based there to rise to 8,200 by 2022. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, yeah. Secretary. I, I, I think Mr. McGregor is utterly out of touch with the people of Argyll and Butte. Because if I, well, if I was to, if I was to, well, having spent, having spent a good proportion of the summer in Argyll and Butte, both on my personal holidays and also on government business, the things the people of Argyll, the things the people of Argyll and Butte were raising with me were about digital connectivity. Wouldn't it be better if we spent 500 million pounds on digital connectivity, yeah, yeah. or on ferry infrastructure, or improving the rest and be thankful road, which Mr. Russell has championed so effectively. Perhaps these are the priorities of the people of Argyll and Butte, and not wasting money on the next generation of nuclear missiles in our society. Yeah, yeah. Question two, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what information it has on how many people in Scotland died between December 2011 and February 2014, shortly after a work capability assessment found them fit for work. Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government does not hold information on the number of deaths in Scotland relating to the UK Government's work capability assessment. However, today I have written to the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions asking for a breakdown of the figures in Scotland. Clearly, if there is any causality between the assessment and anyone taking their own life, that would be a very disturbing and very serious situation and one that would be intolerable. Claire Adamson. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. Does he agree that it's time that Ian Duncan Smith actually adhered, adhered to the so-called respect agenda between governments and comes to the Welfare Reform Committee of this Parliament 
to answer the many questions that we have on the sanctions regime, cuts to tax credits, cuts to disability payments and, shockingly, the deaths of those found fit for work by his government. Secretary. Presiding officer, I absolutely agree and in fact the lack of respect not just from Ian Duncan Smith but from other ministers in his department and indeed the UK government generally kind of you know, cuts under entirely and undermines their claim to treat this parliament and treat the people of Scotland with respect. I would have thought it would be highly appropriate for the Secretary of State to come and explain the reasons for his policies to the Welfare Committee of the Parliament because I'm absolutely sure that if he listened to some of the evidence received by the committee, it would hopefully persuade, his, persuade him to change course completely. Claire Adamson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary again for his answer. Um, does he share my concern about the recent announcement by Ian Duncan Smith that it's likely to be cuts to disability payments for 43% of those currently in receipt of ESA with his current plans? Presiding officer, I think it's generally accepted that if you take the welfare cuts in totality, uh, then the people who have suffered the most are families and disabled people. And indeed, if you look at the impact on Scotland generally, uh, the UK government's package of welfare cuts will reduce welfare spending by just under £2.5 billion in the year 2015-16 alone. By any standard, that is a major attack on the living standards of the most vulnerable members of our community. Question three, Sarah Boyack. Ms Boyack. Apologies, presiding officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with the National Museum Scotland regarding the ongoing pay dispute. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, National Museum Scotland held talks with ACAS and unions on the 21st of August. Uh, National Museum Scotland has kept the Scottish Government informed of the outcome of these talks and the impact of the industrial action the following week. Uh, NMS, as the employer, is keen to maintain dialogue through ACAS and uh, with a view to resolving the pay dispute. And I would strongly encourage this course of action. Sarah Boyer. Uh, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? Is she not concerned that the dispute has been running for over 18 months now and that the NMS only agreed to call an ACAS on the eve of the strike last week? Surely f intervention should have taken place far earlier than that because there's now a huge turnover of staff in this department who are on a two-tier wage salary and surely that's totally unacceptable to the Scottish Government. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, she's right to say that this issue has a long history. Uh, the new contracts for new employees were implemented uh, almost five years ago. Um, it took a further, I think, three years for the PCS um, to uh, take up the issue on industrial action. Um, in terms of uh, trying to resolve this, uh, there have been uh, proposals put forward to tackle some of the low pay issues. Uh, I want to be clear that NMS does comply with the government pay policy and implements the living wage. I would encourage both uh, NMS and indeed also the unions to engage with ACAS. And I think it was unfortunate with uh, uh, talks scheduled with ACAS that there was industrial action. It has to be taken seriously. I've asked NMS to take it seriously. I also hope that the proposals that have been put forward constructively are engaged with. Unfortunately, I don't think the PCS members are yet aware of what those offers might be. Sarah Boyd. Cabinet Secretary, my understanding on talking to some of the staff on the picket line last week is that some of their low-paid members have been asked to donate some of their salary to other low-paid members. How can that be acceptable? And if affordability is the issue, um, how can the Cabinet Secretary think it acceptable for the government to spend 150000 on a commercially viable profit-making enterprise like Tea in the Park, rather than sorting out this long-term, debilitating, reputational damaging dispute? Cabinet Secretary. In order to uh, introduce a new uh, weekend, will, uh, weekend allowance for staff, it would cost £1.2 million over the next spending review. I would point out that over the last spending review, which took place at the time of the changes back in 2010-11, despite that, there has been no request from any member of this parliament to implement or have a change that would uh, provide £1.2 million that would be required to do what the PCS have been asking for. Jimmy D. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for agreeing to meet with me to discuss the ongoing dispute at the National Museums of Scotland. However, the mood of the workforce who I met on the picket line last week is steadfast in its opposition to a two-tier workforce which has been imposed by the management without appropriate consultation. Therefore, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she will take further steps to encourage parties to come to a resolution that ensures, ensures fairness in the workplace and brings to an end a dispute that is damaging the reputation of the National Museums of Scotland and has gone on for far too long? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the member will be aware that I have met with PCS, FDA and Prospect uh, and also with the National Museums. Indeed, a number of the issues that were raised with me by the unions has been dealt with, including the Scottish Living Wage for NMS Enterprises, who weren't part of the pay policy of the government but now have the living wage. Also addressing the issue around no compulsory redundancies that have been addressed. But I do think the issue of low pay is one that is very important um, for all areas. And indeed, when you consider that in terms of the fixed costs, including staffing, for NMS, that that, that uh, bill is 76% of the grant in aid. So in, in terms of the reductions of the Scottish Government's budgets, it's been very difficult for many cultural organisations to meet the responsibilities, including providing uplift uh, where required under the pay policy, despite pay freezes. We must resolve this. I want this resolved. But I think the best way of doing that is to bring together and continue the ongoing ACAS discussions. Very briefly, Neil Findlay. Um, thanks, President Officer. Uh, why is it okay for the Cabinet Secretary, uh, Cabinet Secretary to find 150 grand for tea in the park, but nothing to settle this two-year-long dispute? Could you answer that directly, please? Cabinet Secretary. I think there are many jobs dependent on a successful ongoing tea in the park. I think in terms of £150,000 for that event to ensure its viability, many people across this country would think that's a right decision. And have said that to me. In order to address the issue that he's addressed on a number of times, and indeed Jimmy D has, and asked to meet me, and indeed when I personally addressed that with the unions, we would have to find £394,000 a year to address an increase and provide an additional allowance. Now, are, there are proposals on the table to address the issue of low pay in that sector. I hope every employer, whether it's public sector, charity, as is the case with the National Museum or others, would be seeking to resolve that. But it is a, a real task. There is an offer uh, being provided to PCS. I would encourage them to get round the table to discuss with ACAS and to address it. Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Nicola Sturgeon on the Scottish Government's programme for 